Australian TV presenter forced to apologize after crude Jesus joke. <laughs> <laughs> Question wall? That had he said this about any other religious leader, about any other alleged prophet. Bruce Lawn. Okay, so have you guys seen this? Uh, oh my gosh, this is such an L story. Australian media, Australian media decided to have a comedian on at prime hours, and the comedian made some very unsettling jokes about Jesus. Now, I don't even know if I should play the joke about Jesus. It was so kind of gross and disgusting. But the story is fascinating nonetheless, because I swear, man, folks feel like they could just say and do whatever they want to do. This is the story right here. Australian TV presenter forced to apologize after crude Jesus joke calls for show's accent. Okay. And so there's this, uh, there's a comedian in Australia. And he was on national TV called The Project. It's like a current affairs type of show at a younger demographic. Referring to comments that he receives negative comments on social media about his sexuality from a religious angle, the comedian then joked, I think it's hilarious when someone messages me and says, you have to accept Jesus, love, or you will burn in hell. Because I love Jesus. And, and he's gay, so this is the joke. This is the, this is the punchline. I love any man who can get nailed for three days straight and come back for more. Now you know, you know, you know and I know that had he said this about any other religious leader, about any other alleged prophet, they would have been off with his head. Everybody would have been canceled. The producers would have been canceled. It would have been a wrap. If he said this about, if he said this about the LGTV community or anything like that, it would have been a wrap. And so uh, that was the joke. I'm not going to play you guys the video because I, you know. Uh, <laughs> since the comments were made two days ago, the project has been heavily criticized, criticized in the media, including calls from some quarters to shut the program mm. down. All right. The Australian media writer Sophie Ellsworth questions why the project allowed a Jesus joke to be aired during family time. That's what I'm trying to figure out. This is dinner time. This show runs from 6.30 to 7.30 when families are often sitting in front of a TV watching what's on the news and they're being subjected to this type of crude content. So this, these are the folks that, ho that, that issued an apology. This comedian did not issue an apology, by the way. Not yet, at least. The project hosts Walid Ailey and Sarah Harris have now issued a lengthy apology for case comments, which aired Tuesday night at the beginning of the project. Wednesday episode, Willis said, during an interview last night, our guest told a joke, which we know is deeply and le needlessly offensive to many of you. We want to acknowledge the particular offense and hurt that caused our Muslim. And you know, daggone well, you know, daggone, <laughs> what are we talking about? But, but especially our Christian viewers. You, 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 you mock someone they consider like a, a, you know, a prophet. You mocked Christian's God. Okay, you allowed Christian's God to be mocked. Obviously, I understand just how profound that offense was. If it was that profound, wouldn't they have clipped it live? I feel like there's always a delay on live TV by five to 10 seconds where they can cut stuff out if they need to. Or someone correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Hey, you wanna see something crazy? 67% of the people who watch this channel are not subscribed. Do me a quick favor, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you stay up to date on all the videos here on the Bless God Studios channel. Sarah added, live TV is unpredictable. Ah. Live TV is unpredictable. Yes, there's a delay, right? And when this happened in the last few months of last night's show, it genuinely took us all by surprise and there wasn't a lot of time to react in any sort of considered way. But they all laughed at it, didn't they? Y'all laughed at it, didn't you? Yeah, you did, right? The two went on to simply apologize to viewers. We acknowledge the offense that it caused, but more than that, we're sorry. The joke was not just offensive to Christians, but Australians in general, who no doubt still have some respect for common courtesy and matters. And so this is some of the, the Twitter backlash, people saying stuff like anyone supporting Ruben K is just as disgusting as him. Whoa, what a disgusting joke about Jesus and the project team just giggled and did not say a thing. This is to be expected from damaged people like K. Yikes, yo, these comments are crazy. Hidden behind the shield of LGBTV immunity, the slippery slope continues to form an avalanche. When will people wake up? What an interesting time. What an interesting time. So let's 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 see. Let's see if they uh I don't want to play the joke. I want to see them. I want to see their reaction. Watch this. 
<laughs> Got a question, Wal? <laughs> uh, not about that, no. <laughs> That's their reaction to the joke. Uh, apparently, this is a joke that he's told on tour before. This is stuff that he says all the time at his shows, and uh, and this is not uncommon for him to uh, to use this kind of crude humor, if you will, specifically about people of faith. So I just find it interesting how it's like green light on anything Christian, um, you know. And as far as I know, he hasn't apologized. Let's look that up though. Maybe he did apologize. What do you guys think? I think it's very unlikely that K has apologized, but let Ruben K, let's look it up. The project apologized. Aussie star turns on the project. The project Ruben K made Jesus joke on stage five years ago. So he's used his joke before. Yeah. So he did not apologize. The folks over there apologized. <clears throat> but this is the thing. This is the thing. This is the thing. If you're a part of this community or you wonder why some people have an issue with this community, it's because the voices, the faces, and the folks who are the mouthpiece, the activist of this community tend to be the most fringe and radical and shameless. And so what happens is when the folks representing a said movement are the most fringe, it taints the entire movement. It taints the entire movement. And when you look at folks who on the Christian side represent Christianity in the public square, it's seldom the, the, the fringe folks it's folks that don't go far enough usually. It's folks that are like real soft on anything controversial, right? Think about that for a second. So it's like the folks that are like, like when was the last time you heard a celebrity pastor talk about anything LGTB related? You haven't. They know how to dodge those questions. They're very polite. They're very, you know what I mean? <laughs> but folks on that, from that community tend to be the loudest, most obnoxious. They want to they wanna do drag time, drag, uh, time hour with your, with your little children and say it's not in any way shape. Like, so I think if you're part of this community, I would be demanding better representation. That's what that's that's what I think the solution is. I think you should get better representation. I think I think you should get better representation because the folks y'all are platforming is it's not a good look. In the same way, and this might be a controversial parallel, in the same way that after years of protests and police reform and things done, like body cameras and all these things expanded with regards to the BLM movement you found out that the BLM organizers were frauds, right? Millions and millions and millions and millions spent on houses and all kinds of stuff. That impacts how people then perceive the movement and the issue they claim to be representing because the French folks just do a bad representation. Now, but they all along told you that they were about disrupting the nuclear family and trans rights and all that kind of stuff, right? The organization, not the sentiment. The sentiment is, is common sense, right? So that, that, that's the part, like be careful who you allow to represent you. Hey, this clip is from our daily after party stream. If you enjoyed it, consider signing up for our Patreon community for only $5 a month, where you get access to the replays of our daily after party streams, as well as the uncut extended versions of our podcast, Discord access that's private, and a discount code for our merch store, only $5 a month. And ultimately, it's the best way to help us conceptualize the gospel of Jesus using media, podcasting, and of course, YouTube. The link for that is in the description or in the pinned comment. The perks are amazing. You should get on there. It's only $5 a month. I'll see you over there, all right? Peace.